What's going on, everybody? It is 11 a.m., and you know what time it is. It is time for Murals in the Market Live. I am Jason Hall with Ride Detroit. I do the tours for this place. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Man, I am excited for this one because every week, you know, I usually get this, like, crazy pre-interview time in, but this pre-interview time, I had to actually keep stopping and stopping and stopping Lindy because we could go on for hours, but I'm saving it for you guys. Uh, before we even get to that, though, I do want to say hello, hello to everybody that uh, was back from last week. You know, I'll try to hit the wave button as much as I can. What's cool about today's interview is um, Lindy is really interested in your feedback. So if you have any questions at any time, please send those questions, type them in. I might not be able to get to all of them because this thing starts moving so fast that it's hard to keep up. But we will try to get to as many as we can. We'll write them down and maybe we'll do a session or we will definitely get them to Lindy and she will get the feedback. But maybe we'll do a session where we can address some of that. All right. But with that being said, um, I got to do my house cleaning. I got to uh, thank Marlo Broton for last week. Man, that dude. Uh, you know, you, you talk about artists. That dude is an artist upon artist upon artist, whether it's art uh, in the mural sense, whether it's art in the uh, music sense, whether it's art in the beautiful person sense. That dude is really doing his thing. So I want to give a, mar a major shout out to Marlo for last week. Um, I want to give a shout out to Phil Simpson. Phil ha uh, is working on a mural right now. I think it's almost done or either done. I need to link up with him. I'm going to go over there and get you guys some footage of that. And I'm going to let the cat out of the bag right now because I just don't care. Me and Phil are working on a, uh, an artist tour. So Phil and I are going to co-host the tour. He's going to ride with us on the tour. He's going to talk about each mural that we stop at. And it's going to be, and we're going to do a little meet and greet afterward where you can talk to Phil. So let that cat out of the bag. You don't have a date on that yet. So it will be coming up. All right, now I'm just going to get into it because whenever I ha once again have an artist that has so much to say, it's hard for me to stop even myself because I've become a fan just that fast, even more of a fan. So right now, man, so back in the day, I'm going to let a little shit out the bag for myself. I used to liken myself to be a swing dancer. All right, swing did this little like come around in like the late like 99 2000 so i was wearing man i went through a little like crisis i was actually wearing a suit like everywhere like high waist pants i was really like trying to be that dude so at the time i was trying to learn a dance and this is no lie if you know anybody who knows me i was trying to learn a dance called the lindy hop the reason i'm telling this story is in reading the bio, which I, you know, we're not just going out bio, but Lindy's name comes somewhat from the Lindy Hop. So, with fur without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Lindy, now you said people always mess up your last name. So, let's have you say it before I mess it up. Man, I would have got that. What? How do people mess that up? Uh, hey, I get it. You know, <laughs> I mess up names all the time. I I get it. Hey, that's cool. I mean, I get it. I, I I mean, I'm one of those people too who's like, yeah, I get it. I try to be <laughs> understanding, but in this one, I'm just not gonna let people off the hook. No. If you mess that last name up, you have a problem. You have issues. So, with that with that being said, let's get right into it because. You know, I didn't know much about you other than the bio. Um, so when you started, your story is so amazing already. So how did you get started in the bio? It's like as a, as a child, she decided she liked art. There's far more to that and we know that. So talk to me about it. Uh, so I've always known since I can remember that art was my avenue to express myself. Um, I used to as a kid, and it's it's a little embarrassing to admit, but I didn't learn how to read and write until I was in third grade. Uh, before then, I was doing all. 
all my homework assignments with drawings. I would solve math equations by drawing fruit or whatever objects I could think of. Um, my teachers let that slide for a minute to a point where it wasn't cute anymore and they really kind of had a little intervention with me and my parents. Um, so I then learned how to read and write, but art always remained the way for me to express myself and to communicate. And that just really carried on and continued into now. I've always known that I'm an artist. Uh, it's just who I am. So you're growing up as a, as a kid and you know that you're a little bit different than most. When did you sort of start receiving your first outside encouragement to continue to nourish the creativity that's coming out of you? Uh, so I grew up in a household that well, it was difficult. Uh, so I always looked for avenues outside of my home and really looked for people to speak to and talk to and really confide in. And, you know, there was just a slew of people that, you know, I wound up meeting. Um, a lot of strong, amazing, confident women and some gentlemen as well. Um, one particular individual to mention is Gilda Snowden. Gilda, Gilda still resonates with me to this day. I honestly think about everything she's ever said to me. I think about all sorts of different things that she has taught me at least three, four times a week. She's been a constant inspiration. She's always kept me motivated and going even to this day. Um, and then I have another great mentor, um, Antonio Agui uh, Shades. He's just, he's one great dude. He's taught me so much about spray painting. Um, and then uh, my other mentors right now, I should also give a shout out, Martha and Willie from Cranbrook. Hey guys. Um, they've always, they've always kept me going and like really been pushing my boundaries as well. Um, and then my high school art teacher, Hope Palmer, she's, she was just this crazy, awesome lady who would wear glitter in her hair and these crazy cowboy boots. And she was just so comfortable to talk to me about. So you're, we're like, you know, you're naming all these people and doing all this things, but we're like, so you're a kid. Once again, let's go back. Cause yeah, yeah. you're like, I've always known I was an artist. So when did you start to sort of establish a style? Has for instance, has this always been sort of how you've done things or did you, when did you start experimenting with different ways of doing art? Uh, so I've always, like in my bedroom as a kid, I would always experiment with different materials and mediums that I would find around the house or like random objects. I would kind of like make little mini installations of art in my bedroom. Um, but then when I got into, uh, sorry, College of Creative Studies, um, I was taking way too many classes and I had a, an anxiety attack and I decided to just really kind of just hone in and channel my energy, shut everything off in my head and just confine myself to a tiny sketchbook and just really kind of let whatever comes out come out and just let my hand move and eventually I got to this point where I started making these shapes. and. To me, that became something of an exploration to really kind of begin to understand who I am as a person. Um, and then as years had gone on, uh, it had occurred to me that, you know, we all kind of have this little energy inside of us, this, this individual self, our souls. And, you know, I've always, you know, I just drew and drew, drew people and painted people and landscapes and all sorts of different, you know, everyday objects that you would see. And that eventually just kind of really became really boring to me, especially, you know, after learning a lot more about art history. You know, so many people, so many people have been painted and a lot of people have been misrepresented in paintings. And, you know, to me, we're all human beings and who we are in, individually as people matters more and you know in a way this is kind of like my secret lindy bat signal where i'm basically putting myself out on a silver platter if you will 
to basically expose, you know, this is who I am as a person, this is who I am internally, this is how I visually am representing that. And if I can inspire somebody to basically, I guess you could say, face that in a mirror and think about who they are internally as an individual and really begin to like think of themselves in a positive way and to really begin to think of like how they can express themselves, whether through poetry, music, you know, even if you want to be like a stuck driver, anything like really fun or great and awesome, anything that gets you out in the world and gets you excited about who you are as a person and to embrace that individuality. That's really what my art is about. Wow. Okay, so like I said at the at very beginning of this, I was telling everybody that you are a huge proponent of proponent of getting feedback from people because of exactly what you were saying. So, talk to me about that. I mean, a lot of artists they don't really care. They're like, you know what? I do my what I do, and if you like what I like, I mean, if you like what I do, that's cool. But it's rare that I hear somebody who says, "No, I'm really into hearing people's feedback." I am deeply interested in that, even if it's negative. I as a person believe that we can learn from each other. Um, and that has such great weight to it. If I can learn something from somebody else's perspective, then I have gained something as a human being to really dig deep and think about who I am as a person and how other people are. Um, you learn something new about different people, whether it's culturally, um, independently, anybody, Anybody who's different, I really love to learn that feedback. I want to know if it's something, hey, you're just like, why swirls? Why does it look like flowers? What is it? I want to know what you think of it. I, I want to know more than why you love it or why you hate it. I want to know what makes it, make what, what about it out in this space do you really enjoy? I want to know, I want to know those things me that's important that's my job as an artist i want to be able to give back to the people that have given so much to me again you know that feedback i learned from it so have you ever uh, has everybody anybody ever given you like any advice that you really were like whoa i never thought about that and really did implement it into your everyday how you do things uh yes all sorts of different things awesome. from uh really experimenting with depth within my work um it has really encouraged me to think about something more than just being in the foreground and really thinking about, well, this is an object or these are forms and shapes. Where do they exist? If this is a whole other world that's within you, how does that really look? Is it more internal? Is it micro, macro? We want to know. And that really pushed me to think about, well, yeah, how does this world look? If I, you can carve and create any world, any world that you want. You know, just you gotta push for it, and you gotta work for it, and you know, enjoy it. So you went to CCS, and you've had a fair amount of, I mean, education as far as art history, probably, and a lot of stuff. Does that play into what your art has become, or did it just sort of? It was cool to learn, or did it really like help you shape what your art is? All of the above, actually. Um, so, for instance, I always greatly admired Caravaggio's work just for the depth of realism in his work, and then also just how much of a re rebel he was. Um, <laughs> uh, I really, really, really enjoyed that about his work. Um, but then there were other moments too where I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna not think about what some old white dude has done in the past and just really focus on what. I want to do and you know really using what I've learned from art history as a tool to better my work and really push forward with it. No that's awesome so all right now you've gone to CCS you're doing art and you we talked about how you've always done big art so what do you mean by big art? Uh, so large paintings or even sculptures um, there was one piece that was in an exhibition my senior year at CCS where it was just sheets of 24 by 36 newsprint that I had taped together and the thing had to have been at least 12 feet by 14 feet long, <laughs> huge. And that was just an ink painting that I had done. Um, so I, for me, like I've always just painted and painted and painted and painted. And the passion for painting really kind of came from my second year at CCS. I hated painting. I hated it so much. And me, I of 
painting and really being able to express myself with a brush, spray can, uh, ink, all sorts of different paint mediums. Okay, so you're painting big, you're doing all this stuff, and then how do you end up at murals in the market? either really stressed out or anxious or really excited there to get to like to get their supplies that they need to go and get to work on their job and to get something done and you know I always like to like I said I'm inquisitive I always like to ask I always like to encourage people and to like be like you know you got this it's gonna be amazing and then give my education of what I know about certain things to them or to just even have a casual conversation about those kind of like mediums but to get to your question I ran into Antonio McGee. He came in and he bought some spray paint. And we got to, we were talking about art and paint and just kind of shooting breeze. And he, I gave him my Instagram handle. And he, then a couple days later, I guess he was looking through my profile. He had messaged me about an opportunity at Brooklyn Street Local. And he was like, you know, I love your work. I think this work would be amazing on a wall. I really think you should do this not a paid gig but I really think you should do it and that really inspired me and once I got a taste of painting murals that was it because I already love being outside I already love being around people and so being able to do what I love and being around people that you know inspire me in a lot of ways means a lot and to me that is something that is very important to me and that's really why I love painting murals so much you know it's crazy i often talk about detroit and how small it is it's like a giant neighborhood i love it and and it really is but you're we you know you're talking about tony i mean this is a an artist who's already an established artist doing his thing and he reaches down and helps out an unestablished artist there is such a community in detroit of people and artists that are supporting each other how important i mean i say it every week but how important is it for that community to help and push each other. It's immensely important, I think, deeply about that. Um, there's so many crazy talented artists and kids in this city that deserve all the opportunities that come their way. And I think by us communicating and talking with each other, that just, that just creates an even bigger community that really kind of just really helps us grow as an art art group i mean seriously like it's funny i've known tony i don't know if i really went into it but i've known tony since literally like high school college <laughs> detroit you know and and i'm old i'm not gonna say how old i am but like it's weird when you like think about the fact that i've known tony probably and i'm not dating myself for 30 years um and we've been in these streets and i've heard this story so many times from young talented artists from people like tony you know from people like rula and jesse that just recognized talent and really nurture that because at that time that was your first your first like official mural yes it was all right so and you know i, I i'm so grateful to, for him for that greatly and you know and i'm grateful to rula and jesse as well uh, you know they really inspired me in a lot of ways i've kind of I like to, I'm very modest and low key. I like to keep my distance and observe and kind of learn. Again, that's how I learn is from visual and kind of just scoping things out my own way. Um, they've inspired me to think about, you know, what I want to give to this community, what I want to be able to do in the future and think about, you know, how, you know, I've got this platform. What can I do with it? What can I do to be able to create something that can make change in the city. And I've been thinking a lot about creating a studio in the future where there would be rotating artists that would be working towards an honorary degree while mentoring and students from local high schools here in the city and even like from colleges like Wayne State and CCS to be their assistants and that would be a paid gig for them. I think that would be a beginning to something really great here in the city. I, I already hear a lot of artists say that they're looking so yeah you talked about how like you worked actually so you know 
I like your approach to getting into really a part of murals. We touched on, you know, how you got here, but you actually worked with murals in the market the year before. I did. You were in murals in the market. Yes. I uh, volunteered my time the summer before. I really, I, I personally like to get to know people before I commit to something. I want to know how something goes. I want to see how something, how everything operates. And I also like to be able, because I'm such a workaholic, I really like to know how I can help other people while I'm doing what I'm doing to help me at the same time. It, to me, it's like a really good equal balance and it really benefits everybody in the long run. And I really learned during that time, like not only how like amazing and great of a team they are, but also how how they how they operate. And it's just such a, such a brilliant and amazing thing that they do. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like there's the session, guys. We get it out of the way every week. Okay, Rula and Jesse, you guys rule the world. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, I, I, and I'm not just saying that. No, every week it always comes around to that because they really do recognize talented individuals and really, and really, and I hate to use the word nurture because it sounds so like, you know, childlike. But there have been a lot of ideas that they've really helped me personally work through and facilitate. Uh, and so they really have shown me a lot outside of even just the art world. They really do. I mean, I mean, just take a look at this row of artists. It's like they've given such a platform for so many people um, throughout the city and even beyond the city. They've given so many opportunities and helped so many people. And like you said, nurtured. I completely agree with that. And I, I really do feel very grateful. So. Let's go back. You do your first mural at Brooklyn Street Local. What happened that took you off, you know? So now you've had a taste of murals. Um, and now, do you consider yourself a mural artist? Or do you? is there other forms of art that you're working predominantly in? Are you just kind of focusing on this now? I'm focusing on all of it. All of it. Uh, quite ambitious. I, I will never stop painting murals. I love murals. Any opportunity that comes my way to paint a mural, I'm happy. I just love being outside and being on a ladder, on a lift. And I like being high up in the air. It's a great way to kind of like bird watch a little bit. It's kind of nice. It's really <laughs> quiet. <laughs> um, but um, I guess to answer your question, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Can you repeat it? Oh, no, man. I even like. I've been trailing off. It's so, uh, I even like, I'm, don't even worry about it. I lost my own train of thought. I'm so caught up in you. So let's talk about this uh, mural ex specifically. So what was your, is there any inspiration behind this? Because a lot of times I hear I did this because of that and this because of that. Or was this just something that came off of your head? Uh, so it was something that came off of my, from my head. It was a sketch that I had done years before. I like to do something where like, when I begin to envision doing something and participating in something, I really kind of think of an idea beforehand. And so I had drawn a sketch for this maybe two years prior. So I already had the vision of painting something like this. Um, and what inspired it? Well, we can start with the colors. Yellow, teal, and purple are three colors that I deeply feel connected to. They, like, purple is such a mood to it. I really enjoy the calm and peacefulness of it. Uh, teal, it just, always revitalizes me and yet keeps me calm and happy and I love yellow because it's just so bright and happy and it's to me yellow it's just it symbolizes such it symbolizes such prosperity okay so you're up here you're doing your thing how many I mean how many hours did it take to do uh, so it took me from 10 a.m. to about 10 o'clock at night okay so you knocked it out in one day I did okay so you're up here on the lift. Was everybody up here with you? We talked about the energy because this is one of the few places in the murals, you know, that we have this many artists right next to each other. What was it like to be up on the lift with, you know, Joey right down here? <laughs> Just 
I, I remember coming down here and just, you know, being amazed at, first of all, the caliber of work that was all in one spot at one time. And to see everybody feeding off of each other. There were a couple times I saw people run out of colors and they would literally toss like a can over to the person next to them. And it was just surreal. So you do your thing. So how many murals do you have in the city right now? Because I know you don't have just one. You've got at least. I got more than that. Yeah, I mean, it's, since then you've ta it's taken off, huh? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe, maybe 10. 10 so, murals. Since, since I started maybe in 2016, 17. Wow. Wow. So do you think that murals definitely, and I say this when I do the tour, I'm like, people don't really get the opportunity that it is and where you go after this. Was there an uptick in business and everything after murals in the market? Uh, so I did get a request. <laughs> started my started at Cranbrook for my graduate degree uh, so I really had to like juggle all sorts of different things um, because being in a graduate degree program is no joke it's a lot of work yeah. my question I was going to say is this a personal journey or is this something you feel like will make your career stronger both yeah said right now there's a lot going on in the world man and any bright spots that we can have or any shiny days that we can uh we can use them have you been busy during everything that's going down right now with you know i always ask this because some artists are like you know COVID's really affected me that you know more so the international artists but then you talk to shifi and his models i'm getting money in a pandemic so he's not stopping his flow how's it been for you multitasking and you know even if it's from something small like painting a, a small painting at home in front of your TV or you know getting on like, the phone with somebody just to have a talk about art that keeps the ball rolling that keeps you that keeps the juices flowing anything that you can do keep going and keep making art even if you're not like physically making art you're still doing something that keeps it fresh in your mind soul then then you're gonna be we're all gonna be okay <laughs> we're gonna be okay <laughs> i have to be i have to say that the majority of the detroit artists <laughs> are the ones who are like i ain't really affected by i mean i'm affected because we're all clearly affected and we talked about that for sure yeah. um but as far as work goes you know and i'm not gonna say hustle harder but detroit artists are like nah you know i'm really gonna keep doing my thing as much as I can mm -hmm. um, and keep pushing the envelope um, what's up you know next for you mm -hmm. uh, so I did a residency this past summer uh, at bulk space it's the talking dolls residency um, I made a large body of work that will be showcased during the winter hopefully uh, we'll see what happens in the next couple of months uh, but I do have a solo show in December and then I am finishing up my second year at Cranbrook. There will be a classic show at the come spring. Uh, where, yeah, I will be with all my favorite studio mates and everybody in that show. And I'm working on a couple sketches right now for a mural to work on during the winter. Um, over 
on Willis would be inside. Okay, I was gonna say it's not outside, but you don't like <laughs> you don't mind painting in the winter. You like painting painting outside. I do. I uh, actually the mural at Brooklyn Street Local. I painted it from November to like January, and I was on a ladder in 35 degrees painting, which I don't recommend because the, the paint might not stick too right. well. But you know, I, I pushed it. I pushed it. And I did it during times where the sun was out, so that way the paint would stick better. <laughs> um, but I was just so eager to do it, and I just, once I get an idea, and once I want to do something, I don't really let anything stop me. You know, I do things safely, and I plan things out accordingly, but, you know, if you want to do something, you should do it. Don't let anything hinder you, and, you know, really embrace, you know, all the good things that come in your life, and don't take it for granted. Don't waste it. And if you know if, if things come up in your life where it prevents you from doing something, just vocalize that. People are super understanding. People, you know, will, people if they really want to work with you, they'll work with you. Right on, right on. So, a couple questions. So now I get every week I get a couple of questions in a sort of crowd faves. So one of them is, um, do you think that school is necessary or important? in this journey of becoming a mural artist? So I have pretty strong opinions on that. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, growing up as a kid, I didn't learn how to read and write until third grade. I always thought one way of learning, one channel of education is not really the right way to educate everybody. Everybody learns differently. Everybody has different ways of where they can take things in and absorb information. But then at the same time, there's other information out there that deserves, and rightfully so, deserves to be heard just as much as what we're learning in school. Um, which always kind of made me check out. And I would excuse myself from class to go to the library to do my own research, even if it meant just looking at pictures in a book. Um, so I would do things like that. I, for me, education is important to me because I, I want to better myself. I want to better understand who I am as an individual. But the thing about that is that education doesn't just exist in a school and education exists outside of school as well with, you know, your community, with your surroundings, what you can absorb and obtain from around yourself. Um, and just really kind of taking in information that you can take from your public library, all sorts of different places, really honestly. Um, but to really answer your question, if you feel that education is something that you want to pursue, you should. Um, but if you don't feel that it's something that you don't want to do, that's fine too. There are other things that you can do. I just, I feel education is important to me because I want to better my art and I want to better myself and better understand how I can push it. No, for sure, for sure, because, you know, education is education, and, you know, every week everybody's got the, a different, once again, a different story, and I love to hear it. I knew that you're still in school, so I knew that you'd have a strong opinion about how yeah. important that is. That was actually a really funny story how I got into Cranbrook. We'll tell that story. <laughs> um, I saw the application deadline was my mom's birthday, and my mom always really, really loved Cranbrook and she always would inspire me about talking about Cranbrook and taking me to Cranbrook to see what they have to offer. And, you know, I thought it was just something, if you see something to apply for and you think that it's out of your reach, apply for it. Always apply for things that, you know, you never know. And I wound up getting an email saying that I was waitlisted probably in the spring from February. And then I received another email a couple weeks later that they wanted to do a phone interview with me. And so I was just like, well, all right, I'll do a phone interview. But it turned out that the phone interview, the only time to do it was when I was going to Lowe's to rent a truck from Lowe's to haul wood and drive it from Allen Park to my house in Jefferson Chalmers during rush hour traffic both ways. And so I conducted the entire interview, which I do not recommend doing. <laughs> just texting and driving and calling on the phone while driving is, unless it's a dire emergency, I don't recommend doing it, but this felt like a dire emergency. Yeah. So I, can, did the, I, I did the entire interview over the phone while driving in rush hour traffic in a truck hauling wood 
and I got an email a couple days later uh, with my acceptance letter and I just was like this has to be the universe giving me some sort of sign and because I did the entire interview with the mindset like I'm just talking to people I'm just having a great conversation yeah. getting to know them and them getting to know me and I just I just didn't overthink the conversation I just enjoyed it well, you probably couldn't overthink it because you were driving a truck full of wood and probably <laughs> thinking about some other things. Let's see what I mean about multitasking. I'm great at it. Do they know that you did this interview? Have I you told? told I told okay. <laughs> they were just like, we would have never have known. That is incredible. And so, and you got it. I did. That is amazing. So, yeah. Uh, the next question is: Is the business end of things? You know, like, you know, people think that you know artists are just like i love to do art so i just will do stuff and paint it and it's cool it how important is it that people understand or even people getting into this understand the business aspect of what this really is it's really important uh, it's really important that you understand what you want and what you want to do because those are key to really kind of focusing on your career. Um, to me, those are perfect ingredients to keep yourself going and to keep yourself thinking about what you really want. Because there are so many opportunities in this world. You, there's just no end to what you could possibly do. And really understanding what you want to do really helps you guide through and thinking about what things you want to apply for, who you want to reach out to, who you want to kind of like connect with and really get to know. Those I think are really important things for a career. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I just, man, this has been amazing, amazing, amazing. This was 40 minutes of education from an educator, man. You're, you're a teacher. It comes yeah. through in the way that you talk and the way that you uh, really want people to understand all aspects of not only the art or reason the, the reason why you do it so thank you for taking the time to come out here and educate us on a few things uh if there's anything you what are your last any parting words that you want to say I yeah do. yeah um i do want to say a couple more things about gilda <clears throat> speaking of educators she was a really important educator to me in my life um, really kept me motivated and really thinking because she was somebody that was always there. She was always at your art opening. She was always taking pictures. She was always cheering you on and keeping you going. Even if it was something that you hated doing or something that you didn't like doing, she always encouraged you to keep on doing until, you know, you really understood what it, what was going on. She never wanted you to stop. And I really hope that I can carry on that legacy. Man. <laughs> Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, Lindy Shoebridge. If once again, you mess that name up, you have some serious issues, AKA Marshu. Yes. Now, before we leave, I've never asked this, but because she did answer it, why Marshu? Uh, so Marshu is basically a cut up. So my dad's name is Mark, my brother's name is Mark, and my middle name is Marie. So I really kind of wanted to pay homage to the men in my life by putting that in um, my artist name. And then I wanted to add in shoe because that was the part that always got messed up in my name and I love it. Because <laughs> it's, it's fun. Because then that's kind of like how you start a dialogue with people and it's just like, actually this is how you pronounce my name, so sorry. <laughs> but I also liked it because my work is, it's almost kind of like otherworldly and like Marshu kind of just sounds like an alien name and I really like Okay. So I, I, I rolled with it because it's just, it really embodies who I am internally as an artist. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. For all of you that have asked me, there is the answer. Stop asking me, all right? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Lindy, thank you for coming out. Thank you, guys. All right. All right, everybody. That was, once again, amazing. I think I'm just going to stop pre-interviewing people because it's better when I do it, when I get here the day of, because I always leave 
feeling like, I want to know so much more. I want to know so much more. And I'm sure you do too. So if you want more information about Lindy, you can definitely check her on her Instagram. And what is that Instagram by, by the way? Instagram? Marshu. Okay. So, and do you have a Facebook or any other ways that they can get a hold of you? Absolutely. So I have a website, marshu.com. I am also on Facebook, just my full name, Lindy Marie Shukrich. And I... I am also on Twitter, but I don't really like to be too active on Twitter <laughs> right now. I didn't even know Twitter still existed, quite honestly, to tell you the truth. So Fair the, <laughs> there you have it, everybody. Get a hold of Lindy. And if you want to support any of the Murals in the Market artists, please go to muralsinthemarket.com or onetimesrun.com. Support your artists. Buy art. We love you guys. If you want to do a tour... Not only am I a, a, I a beautiful face, I'm the only one that thinks that in my mom. She probably doesn't even think that half the time. Not only am I a beautiful face on television, but I also do tours of this shit, man. So you can buy a tour. Yes, buy a tour. Go to RideDetroit.com. We do walking tours of murals in the market, and we also do e-bike tours. The difference is on the e-bike tour, you get to see almost all the murals in the mural in the market because some of them are slightly outside of the footprint. If you want more information, once again, RideDetroit.com or call me at the bike shop, Electric Avenue Bikes, 3613 Woodward. The number is 313-752-1186. Other than that, man, I'm going to get out of here. I got a bike tour. I'm going to try to digest how awesome this day is going to be now that Lindy has started it off that this way. See you guys next week. All right. Man, she... Oh. Oh. Thank you.